Hi there, this is uh, Professor Juris, and I wanted to make you a quick uh, video and show you how to do a combination print using uh, two different images um, on your enlarger, or on two enlargers actually. So um, I had to censor this image for YouTube, but um, you can kind of get the idea of what the image looks like. Um, so let's uh, look at the two pictures and then we'll show you basically how it was done. So this is a picture of a, a dog that I took out in, um, I think it was out in like North Dakota. Um, it was uh, actually in like a McDonald's parking lot and there was a bunch of these wild dogs there that um, they were hungry. So I actually went in and bought them a whole bag of hamburgers and was giving them hamburgers and they all gathered around my car, which was kind of cool. But you could tell this guy just lived outside his whole life. But this is a picture I really like, so I wanted to use it in something a little bit different. And this is the werewolf picture that um, I wanted to incorporate with it. And this was taken down in the Everglades in Florida. So I have these two images and I want to um, create one picture from them. And what we're going to do is uh, look, out how, look at how I actually did this and combine these under the enlargers, under using two enlargers. All right, what I want to do is give you a basic understanding of um, how to create this image in the darkroom. So the first thing you have is an idea, uh, the image of the dog and the werewolf. So you have this idea that you want to put these two pictures together. Um, and this is just the idea. And you can draw it out if you want to, so you kind of get an idea of where it's going to, um, where it's going to go. And this is a point where you need to kind of understand burning and dodging. If you still don't understand burning and dodging, um, I would suggest Googling some YouTube videos about burning and dodging and kind of learning more about it. I've seen a lot of students that um, don't really get the burning and dodging part, but um, you know, if you block light under the enlarger from a certain area, it's going to be lighter there. And if you, when you're block, when you're blocking, I'm actually dodging right here, but on this side here, it would actually be burning then because I'm getting more light over there. Um, in a picture, but so I came up with this idea. So what I want to do then is I'm going to be using two enlargers to create this image. And so for enlarger number one, what I do is I put the negative of the werewolf in the enlarger and I um, project it down and raise and lower the enlarger. Um, I'm just using, I would use a sheet of white typing paper in the easel and I'm um, going to say that this is my easel right here and I've actually put this blue tape on here just specifically for this video so that you would kind of see that um, you have to you know justify the paper so that the, pa the piece of paper is going to be in the same place in two different easels. So I'm just taking this piece of typing paper though and I'm going to put this in and then I'm going to raise and lower the enlarger until I get the image where I want it at in the paper from my idea. So going back to my idea, this, the werewolf is going to be on the left-hand side. So I would raise and lower the enlarger and get the werewolf about the size I want it. And then I would actually draw it. Um, you know, the, the image is being projected on here. I'm in the dark room. I would actually draw, like, you know, an outline so I see this, okay? Um, and then one, I would tape my easel down so that easel does not move using the blue tape you do, because you have to put the piece of photographic paper in here and you want to make sure that this aligns when I slide the piece of paper in here. So then what I would do is take this piece of paper and um, slide it over into um, the enlarger number two where I would be projecting down the dog. So, um, you know, I would have this drawing on here and I would look for the dog and then I'm going to raise and lower the enlarger on enlarger number two so that the dog is going to show um, just like over here. So it would be um, enlarger number two and the dog being there. And once I have that then, then what I need to do is go through and do test strips on the enlarger for the exposure time for both images. Um, and once I, once I have that done, what I would do is um, taking a fresh sheet of photographic paper I would put a piece of photographic paper in enlarger number one, okay? And I'm gonna be printing uh, the werewolf. So what I would do is, um, I have the exposure time ready. I did the test for this. 
So I would go ahead and um, hit the exposure button and say, and you want them to be kind of longer times because you're blending them in. In other words, you don't want to use like a two second exposure. You're looking for an exposure anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds. You know, you don't want it to be too long because you, um, your hand will get tired from dodging and stuff. But if I did like a 15 second exposure on this and for this to come out the correct density that I want it, during that time, I'm, I'm going to block this area like this with my hand. So the lens is up here above it. Um, I'm blocking this area. So there's actually not getting, you know, but I'm, I'm because I'm actually moving like this, it's still getting some um, exposure in here, you know. So you want to keep your hand going up and down, keep your hand moving. Um, you could also do a cut out of the dog. Um, if you do a cut out of the dog, you wouldn't want to cut it out of like paper like this, but you would want to maybe, um, you know, tape this on top of a piece of cardboard and use a razor blade because whatever you use for your cutouts for dodging and burning, um, specifically for dodging, you want those cutouts to be made of something light will not go through because you have to block the light um, from hitting the paper. But what I would do in this particular case, again, is, um, you know, I slid my piece of paper in there. I hit my exposure button for 15 seconds and then I'm going to dodge this area. Um, where the dog is going to go. So there's not much exposure there. It's actually getting maybe about a third because I'm moving. See, I'm moving like this a little bit and it's, it's blending very lightly in there. And that's what's going to blend or make the image become believable, that it's not just going to be this stark thing. Now, one other thing about burning um, and dodging is if you wanted to like do a picture where you're doing a top part and a bottom part, you never just leave something like that to block the light because that's going to make a stark line there. You always have to be moving. If I wanted to like burn the top of this down or put something up in the in the top of the picture when I was exposing it and I wanted to block all this, you have to keep this moving. If you just leave um, like a piece of cardboard or something laying on your piece of photographic paper, it's going to actually create a hard line there. But so I exposed in larger number one. I exposed this and I had dodged that. So what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to take that piece of paper out of that easel. And again, I know exactly where the dog's going to be on in larger number two because I set that up with the piece of regular typing paper. So then I put my piece of photographic paper um, in, in larger number two and I've already done the test strips for the dog. So I know how long the dog is and hopefully it's about 15 seconds. And then what I do is I hit my timer to expose it and then I'll put my hand under this side and I'm gonna dodge the um, where the exposure has been placed already on the paper uh, for the werewolf. So I will go ahead and dodge it like that and keep that covered. But I need to you know, pretty much start with the thing in the picture because otherwise whatever's in the picture over here from the dog, that's gonna become too stark. So I just wanna you know, have my hand in there, hit the timer and um, expose it for the 15 seconds and keep my hand you know over there so i'm dodging that area and then the werewolf would come out and you, you know, it might not do it on the first time you have to try it several times and you know decide you know which is right and which is wrong and like as far as like the densities go and you know try to blend them together if you're getting one image too dark give that image less time on the exposure um and you know basically play with it and these things um you know, don't come about a great photo like this doesn't come about in one try. You know, it might take you the whole classroom period to come out with a really great one. But um, when you do, you have it and then you can, um, you know, scan that in or photograph it on a, on a piece of film and uh, create another negative for that. So then you could just make multiple copies of the, the one you got that came out really good. So hope that helps. And that was how I created this image. So um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you.